Good morning, boys and girls. Welcome to Silver Birch Evangelical Church Sunday School lesson for today. I hope you're all enjoying yourselves. I hope you are keeping safe and keeping well and enjoying this lovely weather that we have. Last week in Sunday School, Jessica and Olivia spoke to us about the story of Noah and how God had sent a flood onto the earth and that Noah and his family were all locked in together in the ark. But at the end, God had sent a sign, a symbol, the rainbow in the sky. And that sign was God's promise, promise of hope that better was to come. And today we're seeing that sign in lots of windows as we put rainbows in our windows to support our NHS staff and them that are caring for us and a sign of hope of what is to come. In the Bible, there are many different signs, but in Jesus's day, the people used to ask him for signs, sign that he was coming into his kingdom, a sign that he was the Messiah. But Jesus rebuked the people. He told them that this evil generation looks for a sign and that he wouldn't give them a sign. The only sign they would have was the sign of Jonah. So we're going to talk about the story of Jonah and Jacqueline is going to read the story of Jonah to us. Once there was a man called Jonah. He was a prophet, which means that he gave messages from God to people. One day God told him to go to the city of Nineveh and tell them to stop doing really bad things or God would have to punish them. But Jonah did not want to go to Nineveh. He did not like the people there and wanted God to punish them and not forgive them. So he ran away to the town of Joppa by the seaside. He saw a ship going far to a far away place, so he decided to buy a ticket and get on it. He thought God would not be able to find him. When Jonah got onto the ship, he was feeling very tired and he decided to go straight to sleep. He didn't know it, but up above on the deck, a terrible storm had begun. A great wind was blowing the ship around on the waves and it was about to be broken into pieces. The captain and his men were throwing things into the sea to stop the boat from sinking but it wasn't working. All the men were praying to their gods when the captain noticed that Jonah was still sleeping. He woke him and told him to pray to his god for help. Jonah explained the storm was his fault. God had sent it to stop Jonah from running away. If you throw me overboard, Jonah said, the storm will stop. The men did not want to do this and kept, try kept trying to save the ship from sinking. The storm became worse and worse until finally the captain and his men decided to throw Jonah into the water. They asked God to forgive them and then tossed him overboard. Immediately the sea became calm and the men thanked God. Meanwhile Jonah sank deeper and deeper into the water. But God had prepared a big fish for, to find him and swallow him up. Jonah was now inside the belly of the fish. He began to thank God for saving him from drowning in the sea. He realised it was silly to try and run away from God. Jonah stayed inside the fish for three days and three nights. Then God told the fish to give a big cough and Jonah shot out of its mouth and onto dry land. He was very, very happy to be out of the fish. God told Jonah to go to Nineveh and tell the people to stop being bad. So this time Jonah did as he was told. When he arrived at the city, he began to tell the men, women and children God was very sad about the bad things they were doing. The people were very upset when they heard Jonah's words and soon everyone, including the king, 
prayed to God and said they were sorry. God was very glad to forgive them, but this made Jonah so angry. He didn't think they should be forgiven. He sat outside of the city and hoped God would change his mind and punish them. While Jonah was waiting, it became very hot. So God made a nice plant with big green leaves to grow up and stop the sun from burning Jonah. It made Jonah very happy. But the next day, God sent a worm to gobble up the plant. Then the sun beat down on Jonah's head and he became hot and sweaty and most unhappy. He sulked and wished he could die. Then God spoke to him. You are sad, Jonah, about the plant which shriveled up, but you did not make it or look after it. The people of Nineveh are more important than a plant. I love all of them even their animals, and I will show them my love and forgiveness. Thank you, Jacqueline. Jonah was a prophet. That meant he got messages from God, messages that God wanted him to tell the people. One day, God told Jonah to go to the city of Nineveh and to tell them that he had seen the evil that they were doing and that he was going to punish them for that evil. But Jonah knew how bad the people of Nineveh were. They were a very harsh and cruel city. And Jonah didn't want to go there because he wanted them to get punished for their evil. So Jonah thought he would run away and go completely the opposite direction and that God wouldn't see him and that God wouldn't know where he was. Sometimes we do things that we know are wrong. And you know, we think that we can hide them from God. But as Jonah found out in the story, you can't run away from God. You can't hide things from God. When Jonah was on the ship, God sent a big storm. And that storm was so bad that the ship was sinking and was feeling like it was breaking up. Jonah told the sailors that it was God who was punishing them because he was trying to run away. So he told them to throw him overboard into the sea and that was the way that they could be saved. They didn't want to do that at first, but finally they threw him overboard and immediately the sea calmed. And Jonah went down into the water, but God had a plan and he sent a big fish and that big fish swallowed Jonah and Jonah was in the belly of the fish for three days and for three nights. Then God commanded the fish to cough Jonah up and the fish coughed him up onto the dry land. Jonah then went to the city of Nineveh as God had told him to do and he told the people that God was going to punish them for their evil. The people repented. They were sorry for the sins that they had committed. And God decided not to punish them. He decided to spare them of the punishment. And you know, we do sin in our lives. There's times we do things that we know are wrong. That's called sin. That's doing things that, that God doesn't want us to do. That's doing things that are wrong and bad and evil in his sight. But we all have sin in our lives and we need to have that sin dealt with. And if we ask God to forgive us of our sins, just like the people of Nineveh had done, they repented, they said sorry. If we repent and say sorry for our sins, God promises he will forgive us. He will not put on us the punishment that we deserve. And how he done that was by sending his son. His son went to the cross and died for our punishment. He took the punishment that we deserve. And you know, that's what God done for the people of Nineveh. He saved them from the punishment that they deserved. 
So, I said earlier about a sign. What was the sign of Jonah that Jesus was talking about? Jonah was in the belly of the fish for three days and for three nights. The Lord Jesus went to the cross on Calvary. He died on that cross. And when they took him down from the cross, they put him in a tomb. They rolled the stone across the tomb. They put guards outside. And he was in the tomb for three days. And on that third day, the Lord Jesus rose from the dead and he came up out of that tomb. That's the sign that Jesus was talking about. Only God has power over death. Only God has the power to raise someone from death. The Lord Jesus, by talking about the sign of Jonah, he was telling the people that he was going to die, that he was going to be buried for three days. And on the third day, he was going to rise again. That was the proof that he was showing the people. That was the proof that he was saying he was the Messiah. He is the Son of God. And he died for us. He died for our sins, but he rose from the dead. So that sign of Jonah is about God's promise. God's promise that he has the victory. That we can have eternal life because he rose from the dead. So when you hear the story of Jonah, you remember the sign that God is in control. God has power over victory. God promises us eternal life. Eternal life that we can one day go to be with the Lord Jesus in heaven. Now, we're going to do a craft very shortly. Um, and I hope you have your pen, paper and your pencils and your crayons ready. Um, and you can see our wee craft today in the big fish and Jonah. And I'm going to pray now and then the craft will come on. So if you just pray with me for a couple of minutes. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this story of Jonah. Lord, we thank you that even when we do wrong, even when we try to hide things from you, that you are always there. You know everything about us. Lord, even when we do wrong things, Lord, you forgive us. You sent your son, the Lord Jesus, into the world. You sent him with one purpose, and that purpose was to die for our sins. And Lord, we thank you for this sign from Jonah. Jonah was in the belly of the fish for three days and three nights. Lord, we thank you that when you died and went to that tomb, the tomb could not hold you. On the third day, you rose victorious over death. And Lord, we thank you that because you rose, we have victory over death. We can go to be with you for all eternity in heaven. Lord, thank you that you loved us that much, that you sent your son for us. Lord, we thank you for this sign, this sign of victory. Lord, we thank you for your promise of eternal life for us if we trust in you. And Lord, I pray for all the boys and the girls in the Sunday school. Lord, I just pray that young in life, they may come to know you as their saviour. Lord, just pray that you would be with them Keep them safe at this time. Lord, giving thanks for your son. Amen. Now we're going to have our wee video of craft. <music> Thank you for joining us today in our 
Sunday School lesson. I hope you enjoyed the story. I hope you enjoyed the craft. And we will see you again for Sunday School next Sunday morning. Have a good week and keep safe. Bye.